If your OBGYN or healthcare provider says any of these five things, I want you to run far away. Let's get going. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm board certified OBGYN, Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, author, social media educator, and this YouTube channel is the health class you wish you had in high school. Before I jump in, go ahead and subscribe and turn on the bell so you never miss an upload. And follow me along on my other socials too, at Dr. Jennifer Lincoln on TikTok and Instagram for more. All right, I'm just gonna be straight with you in this video. I'm an OBGYN and I think I'm a good one. I know that there are some doctors and healthcare providers out there who say some stupid stuff and do some things that aren't just like stupid and annoying, but can actually be harmful or cause trauma. So I wanna empower you to know that if you hear these things, you need to run. You're not in a good place, you're not in a safe space, and you deserve better. Let's just jump right in. Okay, the first thing, if you hear this, you need to get in the car and go. If your doctor says IUD insertions don't hurt and you don't need anything for it, that's a bit of a red flag because here's the deal. IUD insertions can hurt. They can also not hurt for a lot of people and they can hurt bad for some people and there can be in the middle for others. What I'm trying to say here is that pain is real and we should take it seriously. I talk a lot about all the things we can do to make IUD insertions more comfortable in this video up here, so I want you to check it out. And I also have a whole podcast episode where I talk about other things as well related to IUD insertions. You can check that out here too. The bottom line and, and the thing I'm trying to make clear here is that if your provider just poo-poos any attempt to answering your questions, addressing concerns, talking about ways that you should be informed so that you can make an empowered decision. That's not okay. And it uh, concerns me that they might not also stop if you complain that there is pain and that they might not be prepared to give you the things you need to feel okay. So if you hear that, run. The second thing that if your doc says this to you, time to go. If you ask for a tubal ligation or getting your tubes tied, which is a form of permanent birth control, if you ask for that and your doctor says, sorry, can't do it, you have to have kids first, or sorry, can't do it, your husband has to sign a permission slip. Mm -mm -mm. You gotta run and like run screaming and I give you that permission because here's the situation. Yes, we know that there is a higher likelihood of regret if you have a tubal ligation when you're younger, less than 30, or if you've never had kids before. But guess what? You get to decide for you. And after informed counseling, understanding the risks, the benefits, the alternatives, if you still decide that's what you want, you get to decide because it's your body, because you're an adult and I believe in you. And if you feel like you're getting turned down from doctors who are like saying you have to have kids to get your tubes tied, who are they to decide if you reproduce or not? We're not here to play that game. And do you think guys who go in and get vasectomies are getting the same treatment? Absolutely not. So this is a big red flag of a very patriarchal, patronizing, controlling way of thinking, and we're not here for that. So you're gonna just take your little paper gown off and you're gonna walk out the door and then you're gonna go find someone else. And I will tell you, I do know of a list that exists I think it's on Reddit or Facebook. God, this sounds so sketchy, but it's not. <laughs> of doctors who, you know, provide these sorts of surgeries and procedures in a much easier way. I know that because my good friend, Dr. Karen Tang, who's an awesome gynecologist, also on YouTube, she is in Pennsylvania and she's on this list. She's one of these docs. And I'll link it here if I can figure it out or put it in the show notes. But know that there are plenty of us out there who are willing to help people who don't want to have kids because your worth as a woman or somebody who can have a baby is not wrapped up in whether you have kids, okay? Okay, run number three. If you hear this, you're told you need a pap smear every year. That is so not true and is not the updated guidelines and it hasn't been that way for a long time. Now it is important to understand the difference between a pap test, which is screening for cervical cancer, and a pelvic exam, which doesn't involve a pap test. And so I do have a video here, an example of what it looks like to have a pelvic exam and to understand what that looks like. But if your doctor is saying you need a pap every year, unless you've had high risk conditions or abnormal ones before and they're monitoring for that, that's absolutely true. But if you're, have never had an issue, they're just telling you this, that's so not true. And it is true that pap smears should be done every three to five years, depending on your age. And if you've had HPV testing before, I'll link those guidelines below. And if your doc is trying to hold your birth control hostage for a pap test to run, go away, run far away, know that if that's an issue and you need birth control right away, you can get birth control by the mail blah, blah, blah. I've covered that so many times elsewhere on my channel, but your provider should not be doing pap tests every year. Mm -mm, no. The fourth thing, if your doctor says that you are letting them know that sex hurts and they say, just drink wine, just relax. 
I don't advocate violence, but I wouldn't be mad at you if you kick them and then ran out the office. No, don't kick. I'm, legal disclosure, I do not condone any violence. I'm just kidding. But this is the shittiest thing a healthcare provider can say to somebody, especially those of us women who oftentimes don't get help with things like pain. And especially when it comes to pain and sex, there's a lot of shame. If somebody's actually telling you that and then that's what you're told back, that is terrible because it doesn't work. And because sex hurts for lots of different reasons and you deserve to have that looked into and figure out what's going on and have it appropriately treated and not just be treated like a baby and be like, just relax. Really? I didn't think of that. Mm -mm. Run and go find a new one. Okay, the fifth and final thing. If your doctor tells you any of these things, I want you to run so far away. And if you're up for it, I would love it if you would report them to like their medical board or, um, you know, something like that. Because if your doctor tries to sell supplements or recommends things like saliva testing for hormones or recommends bioidentical hormone pellets, those kinds of things, that is so, so bad. There are so many problems mixed into one here and it all comes down to the very basic issue of that none of these things are evidence-based. And if your doctor is trying to directly sell you a supplement that either they make or they sell in their office and they get a kickback for, that's super sketchy and also like not legal because they cannot be making profits off of something they're selling you directly. That gets in the way of them being able to be objective. When it comes to things like testing hormone levels, salivary hormone testing, like. There's no evidence that any of this works. Unfortunately, some providers do do this a lot more in the naturopath space, but there is zero data that this works at all. And then to be titrating your hormone treatment, if it's for menopause or for other random issues like hormone imbalance related to these numbers, it's super not evidence-based. We have clear guidelines to show how to do this. I'm not gonna talk about them in this video here, but if they do these things, and especially if they try to sell you bioidentical hormones where they put these little pellet implants in, you're more likely to die than doing traditional menopausal hormone therapy. I like my patients to live. So all these things are enormous red flags and also ethical and legal issues too. So you gotta go. Okay, those are my five things that if your provider does these, you need to run far away, don't look back, grab your things, don't pass, go, get out of there and find somebody better. What other things would you add to this list? Or have you experienced any of these? I would love to hear in the comments below. Go ahead and check out my references and resources for more. And I hope you learned something today. And I also hope you never have to run away from an office where somebody's like this because we all deserve good healthcare. All right, till next week, stay safe, everybody.